Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about Google Drive and organizing your files and folders in your Google Drive. Specifically, we're going to talk about creating folders, ordering folders, keeping your Google Drive organized, dealing with files that are shared with you, changing the way you view your files and folders, and the starred folder. Well, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you should do is open a browser window and browse to drive.google.com and log into your school's Google account. You can see I've done so here. You can also see there's already a folder here called Classroom. That Classroom folder belongs to Google Classroom and is created automatically once a user is logged into their Google Classroom for the first time. That's where this file folder came from. So we're going to talk first about creating folders. To create a new folder, all you have to do is right-click anywhere in the white space and select New Folder. Or you can click on the New button in the upper left-hand corner and select Folder. You can then name your folder. Now I'm going to continue creating folders here that might correspond with a sample classroom configuration. You can take any part of this that you like, or you can create your own folder structure in your own Google Drive. Notice that when the folders are created, they appear in alphabetical order by default. I also want to point out that Google Drive has a couple of different ways that you can view your folders. This is the list view. This icon here will provide the grid view. The grid view will show the folders in a slightly different way, but still keep them in alphabetical order. You can choose whichever view you prefer for your folders. Now, if you're a person that doesn't necessarily like the alphabetical ordering of your folders in Google Drive, you can change that. But you can't, by default, change the way that Google Drive organizes the folders alphabetically. What you can do, however, is rename the files using a numbering system. Let's say, for example, I wanted my science folder to always appear at the very top. I can right-click on that folder, select Rename, and add the number 1, or 01, in front of the folder name. Google always orders the folders in Google Drive alphabetically, but puts all numbers first. Well, I'm going to go ahead and rename some of the other folders in my Google Drive. I'm going to change the name of the math folder and label it with 02, because I like that second and so forth. Okay, so let me explain some of my reasoning for choosing the numbers the way that I did. I want all of my subject areas to appear at the top because I'll access those files most regularly. Then I'm going to skip several numbers and start with maybe the next multiple of 10 for my personal, second grade, and school folders. I'm not going to use a numbering system for my classroom folder because that's the folder that's created with the system once I log into the Google Classroom for the very first time. All of my Google Classroom files will appear in that folder, both as a teacher and as a student. The reason that I skipped several numbers up here is because if I wanted to add an additional subject area at some point in time, like perhaps technology, I could do so without messing up my numbering system. Once the Google Classroom folder is created by Google Classroom, it's okay to rename that folder. I just have chosen not to in this particular case. Within each of my subject area folders, I'll double click to get inside, I might want to include some subfolders. Perhaps I want a folder called Notes, and another one, Quizzes. Perhaps another one called Tests. 
and finally one called Worksheets. Again, you can choose any folder naming system that you like, just so long as it meets your needs for your method of organization. Now inside each of the subject area folders, you may not feel the need to organize based upon the numbering system, and the alphabetical system will suit you just fine. Usually, if there are a larger number of folders that I need to have access to, I will employ the numbering system. So I'll just go ahead and go into the school folder right now and set up some subfolders within that folder. And again, I don't feel the need to use the numbering system for organizing my subfolders. What if I wanted to add just a little bit of color to this to help differentiate the folders. That's easy to do. Simply right click on a folder and go down to change color and then select the color that you want for that particular folder title. I'll go back into my science folder and show you that you can take and organize all of your subfolders with the same color. And it's quick and easy to do. I'm going to select the very top folder and then I'm going to shift click to select all of the folders at one time. Then I'm going to right click and go down to change color and select the same color that I chose for my parent folder. I'm going to do that in my school folder as well. And the reason this is done is because over here on the left hand side, if I were to click this little triangle, I could expand each of my folders from in my drive and my subfolders and then it will be easy to tell what subfolders belong to what parent folder. Now I'm going to tell you what I think is the best way to keep your Google Drive organized. Every time you create a new file or folder, upload a file or folder, or get a file or folder shared with you, that you take the extra couple of seconds that it's going to take to put it in the location that makes sense to you based upon your organizational method. I also think that it's a great goal to make sure that in the root of your Google Drive that you have no files that are just being stored out there. Instead, all files are associated with a folder and stored within a folder. Well, let's go ahead and turn our attention to files that are shared with you. You'll eventually have someone share a Google file with you. And the best way to keep yourself organized is to move those files that are shared with you into your existing file structure that you've created in your Google Drive. On the left hand side of your window in Google Drive, you'll see a link to a folder called Shared With Me. You can go ahead and click on that. Any file or folder that's shared with you will appear in this folder. Let's take for example this file right here called Usher Letterhead. Well, it's been shared with me and it's going to continue to stay within my Shared With Me folder, but I want to keep that organized so I know where to go back and get it two months from now or three years from now. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on that folder and I'm going to select Add Shortcut to Drive. This gives me a pop-up window that I can now use to browse to the location I want to save the shortcut to that file. I'm gonna click on My Drive and go down to My Personal Folder. After I highlight my personal folder, I'm going to click Add Shortcut. Well, let's go have a look at that file now. Notice that it's got a little shortcut symbol. The reason it's got a shortcut symbol is because that's a shortcut to the file that was originally created by a user called Scott Usher. If I go into that file right now, I can change that original document in any way that I want to because the original person who shared it with me gave me edit rights to the file. When Google Drive saves this file, it's auto-saving it to the original location, not into my drive, but into the drive of the originator of the file. On files that are shared with me, I like to create shortcuts to them rather than to create a copy of that file for myself almost all of the time. There are occasions when I like to have my own copy of a file. So let's go back to the shared with me file. I'm going to take another look at that Usher letterhead. Now remember the last time that we did this we created a shortcut to the file. 
But instead, this time, I want to keep a copy for myself and make it my own Darth Vader letterhead. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select create a copy. That creates a copy and store of that document and stores it in my Google Drive location. So I'm going to go back to the My Drive folder and you'll notice that copy of Usher letterhead now exists in that folder. Well, I'm going to go ahead, right click on it, rename it, and I'm going to save this thing as Vader letterhead. And then I'm going to go ahead and move it to my personal file. Now I have the original shortcut to the Usher letterhead, but now I have my own copy of the Vader letterhead that I can choose to change in any way, shape, or form, and it won't have any effect on the Usher letterhead original document that was shared with me. So when files are shared with you, you'll have to take just a moment and determine whether you want to create a shortcut to the original document, which I have to say I use most often, or create a copy of the original document and keep it for yourself. The last thing that I want to talk about is the starred section. The starred folder exists for you to be able to place files in so that you have easy and quick access to those files. The more complex your directory structure gets in your Google Drive, the more likely it is you're going to find it relevant and efficient to use the starred folder. To place an item in the starred folder, simply browse to that item right click on it and select add to starred. Now when this person browses to his Google Drive he can simply click on the starred folder and the letterhead will appear right there for him. You can choose to use the starred folder in your Google Drive any way that you like. You may find a couple of files and folders that you constantly need access to and want to star them and keep them in that folder permanently. You may, however, decide that it's beneficial for you to rotate certain files or folders through your starred section as you progress throughout the year. For example, you might want to star Unit 1 while you're working on Unit 1 in your class. And at the end of Unit 1, you can remove that star and star Unit 2. I found in the past that using the starred folder has saved me a significant amount of time as my file structure within my Google Drive has continued to grow bigger and bigger. When you no longer want a file or folder to be accessible within the starred folder, simply right click on it and choose remove from starred. It's probably going to be to your benefit if you only keep a small number of files or folders in your starred section at any one given time. I think that will help keep you the most organized and efficient you can possibly be. And that's all there really is to keeping your files and folders organized within your Google Drive. My part's done showing you how to do it. Now it's up to you to figure out the best way to do it and to make sure that you keep up with it. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope you have a great day.